So in the prior video, we were talking about the structure of bacteria and archaeal cells versus uh, eukaryotic cells. So um, I want to talk here about photosynthesis in cells. There are a couple types of uh, photosynthesis. The one that's most common uh, produces oxygen uh, from water. There are also ones that produce that sulfite, sulfate from sulfide and oxidize iron 3 plus from iron 2 plus and um, can oxidize organics. Right? But what I'm going to talk about here is what we normally think of photosynthesis that actually produces oxygen. And this does not happen in archaea. Uh, it happens in uh, bacteria and in particular cyanobacteria are the ones that invented oxygen producing photosynthesis. So the, the structure of cyanobacterial cells is very similar to that of other bacteria. Um, but in addition, they have these extra membranes called uh, thylakoids that hold the photosynthesis apparatus. So the photosynthesis occurs in uh, these extra membranes and the cyanobacteria still have all the DNA and the ribosomes and um, all of those other components. So the photosynthesis, of course, allows the organism to take carbon dioxide, water, and light to make energy and oxygen. And that energy goes to make organics. So the process where this conversion of the CO2 and energy and light occurs in a different place from the membrane, it occurs in uh, the carboxysome. All right, so it's in the carboxysome that this reaction takes place. And so what happens is the energetic molecules are created, the uh, ATP are created in the thylakoid membrane and those make their way to the carboxysomes which is where the, the organics are actually created. If we look at eukaryotic cells, so these um, the ones that are photosynthetic are of course plants um, and algae. Um, all, in all cases, they're doing their photosynthesis in these, these capsules that are called chloroplasts. And these chloroplasts have a, a membrane around them and then they have the thylakoid membrane inside and they have a little bit of DNA in them as well. And much like we see for the mitochondria that have DNA, this DNA, when we actually look at it and compare it, it's really closely related to the cyanobacteria. So the, the similarity of the process and the enzymes plus the characteristics of the DNA demonstrate that these chloroplasts are the descendant from cyanobacteria. And so this, like the mitochondria, is another case of endosymbiosis. Uh, 
uh, with the host cell providing a consistent environment for the ancestor of the chloroplast and the ancestor of the chloroplast providing energy to that ancestral um, host cell. So again, it's a, it's a mutualistic process that allowed plants and algae, the ancestors of plants and algae, to become autotrophic, to actually not have to eat, but to basically be able to take the carbon dioxide from the environment and convert it into a combination of energy and organic matter. And so one of the interesting things about photosynthesis is that it's such a valuable process that has been um, co-opted uh, by the ancestors of plants and algae. Similarly, with the mitochondria, they're so useful that they, they have been co-opted and integrated into eukaryotic cells. So one of the things that's really special about eukaryotes is the fact that they're these merger of organisms of dif different ancestry. We have the ancient eukaryotic ancestor that then adopted a bacteria that, that reacted organic matter with oxygen. And some of, of the ancestral eukaryotes also adopted cyanobacteria to be able to perform photosynthesis. Thanks for watching.